Thank you. <clears throat> um, the first thing that I want to talk about real quickly is uh, the meetup groups. I've been really uh, privileged, actually, to get a chance to start not just my own in Salem, but several other ones around the country. I started one in Lynchburg, Virginia. They're up to about 20 members, another one in Santa Fe. They're up to close to 20 members, and they just spun off on their own, decided to buy their own meetup account, so I, they don't need me anymore. Um, and I just started a new one over in uh, Enid, Oklahoma, wherever that is. And uh, all I, I just picked them off the list on uh, ronpaul.meetup.com slash about. There's that massive list of places that people are waiting for a group, so I just look in there and try and find one that needs a group real badly. There isn't another group nearby, and there's a, a good at least a handful of people there. And you just go for it. Um, I came up with a little corny word thing here of how to do that. Locate where you know where they need to be. Create, create the group. Cultivate, you know, build up the membership and pick out some uh, leaders. Get at least one person who's, who's willing to step in and be the local organizer because you can't do that from remote. Emigrate, meaning you know when they're ready, you go bye bye, and then duplicate, go out and do it again. And uh, that's that's I feel kind of like a mother hen, you know, hatching little eggs all over for Ron Paul, and it's uh, it's it's really pretty fun. Um, I came up with some teams um, that I think are important in any meetup group, and I did this a little too late. I wish I had known this when I started my meetup group. So this is kind of things that I wish I had known to do, um, and there's a lot of things I wish I'd known to do. But I'm just going to list out the teams. These are basically the functions that any meetup group, in my opinion, should be covering. And these are not in any particular order, just the order that they came to me as I sat and thought them out. Uh, media liaison. Every group should have at least one person that is building up contacts with local media. National media, as much as you can, if they'll talk to you and be nice to you, but at least your local media, because those people are generally pretty friendly, and you'll find a lot of them are willing to do stories. And Like, uh, we just got contacted by somebody from Willamette Week. Um, is Karen's not here tonight, is she? Okay. Well, Okay. But uh, she got contact, Karen Sutton got contacted by somebody from Willamette Week saying, hey, I've seen you guys over near the zoo with your banners, and I'm wondering what this is all about. Can I talk to you guys and do a story about this? So that's how it happens. You know, you go out, we go out, and we create the, the media. We create the event. We, we be the news. And then we will get some interest from media. But then it would be good to have somebody that is on top of that and maintaining contact on an ongoing basis over the months with radio stations, newspapers, magazines even, whatever, whatever your local media is. Um, next function is documentarian or archivist. And basically this is the old question, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? If we have a meeting and there's no record kept of it and nobody finds out about it, does it have an impact? I mean, it'd be, obviously we're, we're recording this. It can go out worldwide. Could be potentially millions of people watching it. I'm sure there'll at least be hundreds. And so that's definitely better than if we just have a meeting and then we all go home and nobody knows what we did. So you should have uh, videos and people taking notes uh, or audios, whatever it is, build a record of what you did and then store that. That can come in handy in the future also. So you, uh, somebody can ask you, well, what have you guys been doing? You can go back and, and say, oh, well, we did this. And this. Uh, <clears throat> event planning. Now, this is kind of normally the function of the meetup organizer, but it doesn't have to be. And as the group gets larger and larger, it would be kind of good to have a team of people that are working on that. And that can be things like um, coordinating transportation, lodging if you're going out of town, um, working with the other groups in your area to see if they want to uh, put something together with you, working with the documentarians to make sure that they have what they need to uh, make a good record of what you did. Um, next one would be sign and banner creation. Some people really like doing that. Some people don't. But you, you got to have the materials and the paint and whatever you're going to use to create your, your uh, signs and your banners. And um, those can be really simple, like Ron Paul Revolution, or it can be something more message-oriented. You can put Hope for America. You could put uh, in the IRS or you know whatever it is. Put out some message that you can associate with Ron Paul's name. And that can be a different message from one place to another. You might find you're in a place with a lot of older folks, and so you'd want to have a certain message for that. Or if you're in a college, you'd probably have a different message for that. So the sign and banner creation team wants to have lots of ideas and crank out signs for the group to use. Uh, next team would be propaganda ranchers, is what I call them. I have, I have one in my group. And that's just somebody that um, goes out and finds out like what T-shirts are available and what bumper stickers and all this kind of stuff. Um, what are the different kind of pieces of art that people have created that you could pull in and use to create your own custom materials if you wanted to. 
uh, what kind of prices and availability are, are out there for those. Uh, next one, next team is uh, new member welcome wagon slash member contact maintenance. And that also just generally falls to the meetup organizer, but it doesn't have to be. You could have other people that are doing that with you, that are, especially as your group gets larger. If you've got 100 people in your group, it's pretty hard for one person to really keep track of all those people. So if you have people that are going to help you to, to make sure you're not losing track of people, if you haven't heard from them for a few weeks, give them a call or an email, see what's going on. Try and find out if people are not coming to your events, why aren't they coming? Is it a bad night? Are people just busy right now? Is everybody on vacation? What's going on? You know, How can we accommodate them? Build an event that they will come come to. They'll be able to come to and they'll want to come to. Uh, catering. That's my mom. She likes to bake us cookies. So we're kind of fortunate to have that. Um, so that's a good thing to have. Artists. Um, if you have artists in your group, they can do a lot of different things. They can create uh, custom artwork for t-shirts or bumper stickers or anything else like that. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have artists, but it's a, it's a good plus. Um, liaison with other meetups. And this is something that I kind of came up with as I was trying to keep tabs on all the different meetups in the, in the Portland area, the Oregon area, all up into Vancouver. I'm on a couple of national meetup lists. I'm getting all these emails from all these different places. It's really hard for me to keep up with 12 different lists at the same time. So it would be kind of nice if each group had one person designated to maintain contact with every individual other group that's in your region or that's important for you to have contact with. So, for example... If I have one person on my list that's maintaining contact with Katja and the Vancouver group, they can keep me updated on anything that's going on with Vancouver that I need to know about, and vice versa. They can keep Vancouver plugged in on whatever we're doing if, if there's something that they might need to know from us. And that can be, you could have one person that does all that for you, or you could have a different person for each group or whatever combination works for you. Web presence, I actually split this into two. Um, offensive web presence and defensive web presence. Um, the offensive web presence is looking around for ways to sort of publicize your group, let people know what you're doing, establish a good presence, make your um, meetup site someplace where when people get there, they're going to see something that they want to be part of. And this is really crucial because when somebody goes home and they see Ron Paul banner across the freeway, they come home, they look up Ron Paul, oh, meetup.com, okay. They punch up their local group if they go there and the site doesn't look like there's anything going on or they, you know, they don't like what they see there they might not choose to join you. On, on the other hand, if they see something that's really exciting, there's lots of people you know, talking about stuff, doing stuff, new people joining, stuff going on, it's like a party. You know, you go to a house, and if there's a good party going on, cars in the driveway, laughter coming from the, you know, well-lit, it's great. If you go out there and the stairs are all broken down, the windows are shuttered, you know, I don't want to go in. Um, the defensive web presence would be things like watching for polls, and sometimes a poll will come up, and we need more votes, so you've got to sound the alarm and get people over there to, to vote and get our guy up in the poll. Um, uh, also, just keeping tabs on what's going on on all the sites like dailypaul.com and all the other blogs and, and various things. There's so many different sites out there that people are doing stuff on. I can't keep track of that all myself. It'd be really nice to have some, some help of other people that, you know, it's kind of like the, with the group liaisons, where if you had a different person in charge of each one, or one person just wanted to do it all because they're just a gung-ho person, that's great. But if you know each site is, that has important stuff coming out on it is getting monitored by at least one person in your group, then you're not, you don't have to worry about missing, missing out on something that might slip by you.